obviously got the latest line because he's wearing the new one of the don't trust anybody. But uh, yeah, head over to collegeelbowbrand.com. Use promo code PWR360 and save some money on some wrestling street fashion. And Shane, who are you wearing today? Oh, yeah, I got the DGA, you stupid piece of trash. Don't ever <laughs> trust nobody. Um, yeah, I got the latest and greatest. But what you can trust is that Colin Elbow brand is the, uh, like I've said, week after week, I wear a Colin Elbow brand shirt probably six days out of the week. CollarandElbowBrand.com is where you can get all your wrestling merchandise. Well, gentlemen, let's move on and talk about NXT, which was on last night. The show opened with Keith Lee coming out to explain or to talk about, uh, you know, his new championship reign in NXT. How did you think the opening of the big show on the USA Network went last night with now what is NXT? Wait, the NX Lee era, I think they were calling it, Shane? Hmm. Uh, I thought it was good. You know, I love Keith Lee coming out, having his moment. Man, he's good on the microphone. Uh, I thought he was, uh, I thought that was great. I love the continuation. Uh, you know, you had the big celebration last week. So this week, let's bring him back out. You know, his uh, a little state of the union, so to speak, from Keith Lee. Uh, and I thought he's good, man. He's got a unique delivery. Man, there's energy to him. You know, you, you got to give him that. You know, I was having this big conversation on uh, Twitter uh, with with the MMA community after the UFC this past week, when one of Great. their most their most dominant champions, Kamara Usman, you know, was like, man, here's a chance to cut a promo after his win because he beat Masvidal. Can he cut that promo? And he could not. <laughs> you know, just uh, <laughs> you you, you got to have charisma, man. You got you need it. You got to have it. And uh, I, I thought that first opening segment was great, bringing out Dominic. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. Dominic D-Jack is what basically everybody calls him because we struggle. Those of us that struggle with names. And what is um, it? Dejovic? Say again? Dejovic? Like I said, D-Jack. So he came <laughs> out. <laughs> like I said, D-Jack. So he came out. And I like the way that went, you know, without animosity, not a silly swerve, not I'm going to turn on my friend. Just, hey, I'm giving you the first shot because you deserve it. That sort of thing, man. I like it. Respect. I like the way that, yeah, 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 I like yeah. that. Yeah. I did too. Um, I was surprised they opened with that, knowing, but again, they don't know what AEW is opening with. When you have Cody coming out first, you know that AEW meant business. Bringing out their new um, two belt champion, I thought was great. He does have an amazing delivery. You do not expect someone to sound that, I don't want to say soft, but he just sounds really pretty when he talks. You know what I mean? It just sounds really pretty. It's calm. He does. It's calming. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he, it's energetic, he gets, yet at the same time, it's calming. It's very unique. <laughs> very therapeutic, yes. I, I feel but, better. Um, I feel better. I'm going to call him after this. Just like, hey, man, just read to me or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, 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 it's, I liked how he called out DJAC. He yeah. says, hey, you know what? I had I had the biggest battles with you. Let's let's do it one more time. You in in my mind, you deserve this. You earned this. I thought it was very interesting that we didn't hear from Adam Cole. We didn't see Finn Balor. You know, two guys that have been um, I don't want to say staples, but have been main players in NXT for the past two weeks. Yeah, well, we did get to see though Damian Priest uh, after Keith Lee opened the show. It would be him against Cameron Grimes. Damian Cameron Priest. Grimes. <laughs> that's good. a shane helms guy right there well, Can we grabs? <laughs> well a good match a, a very good match actually actually but priest would get the win in this matchup dave what'd you think if you, you know what i did see it you know it's going i was going back and forth i mean it's kind of hard when you have ftr but cameron grimes is that guy that you just want to watch because he does a lot of things that you just don't believe he could do i mean he is so solid in the ring. He seems extremely comfortable. Uh, Damian Priest and him have been going back and forth for a while. I thought I thought they had a great match. And you know, Cameron Grimes, I think, out of uh, this program is going to become the bigger star of the two. Shane, what do you say? Uh, you know what I love about Cameron uh, Trevor Lee is what I've always loved about him is his little uh, the way he pays attention to detail. His little things, you know, he they do matter. They matter the most. You know, uh, he's so solid. And this match was good. I thought Damian Priest looked as good as he's ever looked um, in NXT. And so I got no problem with the finish. I like Damian uh, winning. 
You know, I don't think it hurt Cameron Grimes to lose to somebody as physically imposing as Damian Priest. And, you know, it, Keith Lee's going to need contenders, yeah. you know, so, and it'll be both of these guys at, at one point, you know, but right now, you know, you're going to need that bigger guy and guys that can just match up with Keith Lee. You know, if he's just beating up little guys, it'll get old for after a while, you know, but um, I liked it. I thought both of these guys looked tremendous and I really enjoyed this match. I really don't see a lot of little guys in big Keith Lee's future, you know, because you got to believe Damian Priest is going to be there. You got to believe, you know, they'll do some more stuff with D-Jack. And, you know, Karrion Cross is right there also. You know, I mean, th th there's three legit guys over 6'2 six, six, on, on that roster that, you know, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with big Keith Lee. Yeah, and the backstage with D-Jack and Karrion Cross, I thought was very interesting, you know. Uh, you see, you see how big D Jack really is there too. You know, that's that's a big old boy. He, sometimes it doesn't come across how, well, especially when he was in there with Keith Lee, who's huge. But I like that backstage segment. Did uh, what language was that that Karrion Cross was speaking? Did anybody know? I think if you play back some of those old '80s rock music albums backwards, I think it's something <laughs> from there. I was wondering if it was Latin, you know, because I wanted to say. Uh, it appears Karrion Cross is an educated man, but um, <laughs> but I thought that was an interesting, you know, in like, a good little segue. But I liked the way he threw. Well, it was odd the way he threw D Jack, and then he started taking off his jacket like he's going to do some real damage, and then he just walked away. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Well, folks, Indy Hartwell would get a win over Shotzi Blackheart as well. Uh, any takeaways from this matchup, Shane? The biggest bump of the damn night. <laughs> uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Blackwell. That bump off the top rope at the end, that shit hurt. I I felt it for her. That part of the ring right there in the corner is damn treacherous, <laughs> absolutely treacherous. Uh, so that bump leading into the finish, you know, uh, I can't get enough of uh, Robert Stone getting run over with that tank. I just <laughs> I feel like that needs to happen every week, you know. Um, and then running with that, that was that was a good little match, you know. Uh, you know, and like I said, that bump looked brutal and it looked like it hurt. And those, both of those ladies worked their ass off. That was a good one. I, uh, I, I have a little bit of heat with Rob Robert Stone. It's like he's stealing my gimmick with the cam walker. It's like, dude, I've <laughs> had that for years. You could have at least asked first. Right. But I love, I love how every every chance he gets, he reminds everybody that he was run over by a tank. <laughs> you know, whether it be on Instagram, Twitter. On TV, off TV, yeah. whatever else, he tells everybody. Um, I would have liked to have seen Shotzi get the victory, even though Stone and them tried to cost her the match. But uh, who would have thought that Robbie and his protege, his uh, associate, as you say, is now in a program with Shotzi Blackwell? I mean, you went from um, Chelsea Green to Rhea Ripley and now they're at, at, at Shotzi. I think Shotzi's going to benefit tremendously from this because Rob Robert Stone is so good at what he does. Oh yeah, her. I mean, just that whole that segment with that tank elevated her <laughs> as much as anything yeah. she's done. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's just how crazy this business is. Sometimes you can have great match after great match after great match, and then it'll be something absolutely silly that no one even thought would work or even gave a second thought to that actually ends up getting you over. It happens all the time. You know, what's what's going good though, or what's been good, I think on NXT compared to AEW and AEW does a good job with it is NXT is much more focused on telling me the story. And they had a lot of video packages last night that told me the story about their stars and their talents and their, their journeys, if you will. Uh, very good. I think to fill the gaps. Now, both shows are, are you know, they've got two hours. Uh, we know that last week they were both at about 65 minutes of wrestling. I don't know what the counts are this week. Uh, but it, it's an interesting balance in looking at the two because, Shane, you talked earlier about how AEW maybe should have explained more the Lucha Mask thing and why that was so important. Well, that's one thing that WWE slash NXT remains absolutely tremendous at is they, most of the time, fill the gaps and get you to where they want you to be versus assuming you know where they want you to be. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Some of the video packages, especially 
And not saying that NXT didn't do this before. Maybe I've just noticed it more since I started doing primetime with you guys because I'm watching everything with a more detailed eye now. Uh, so I don't sound like an idiot up here, although sometimes that's still happening. I, it, it is what it is. Uh, but like some of their promos are just really, they really elevate the character. It isn't just a highlight package of guys doing moves. You know, and a perfect example from last night was Santos Escobar. That shit was awesome. Yeah. You know, that was the that was the best promo or promo package of, of the night last night. And, you know, they did it with Ia Shirai over the last couple of weeks. You know, those backstage promos made me want to see this match tonight that she uh, last night that she had with um, Negan Fox. And, you know, before that, the stuff that they were doing with the Garganos and stuff like that, man, their backstage uh not backstage, but they're just the video packages and promos. And of course, WWE, that's what they're known for. Their, uh, you know, their production is second to none. We, we all know that. But on NXT, it just seems during this COVID era, which we need a better name for this, um, but <laughs> it just seems they're using those packages at that time a little bit more efficiently to further the characterization of some of their personalities that they have. And last night, like I said, Santos Escobar, that shit was like, that looked like a, a something you would see on um one of the in, kind of Netflix shows. I, yeah. I forget, I forget, you know, uh, I don't know. You know what the hell I'm talking yeah. about. But that shit looked good, man. Look don't great. forget this, back in the day, pro wrestling, like when we used to watch NWA back in the day, it was a televised wrestling show. Now, 2020, and for the past 10 years, it's been a wrestling show that has pro wrestling on it. Yep. And exactly. there's a slight difference there. A a slight, difference we're we're not just showing matches. You know, we're not just showing matches. We can develop characters, develop personalities that people can get behind. And NXT, just like I said, with that Santos Escobar specifically last night, I really love that. So let me ask you this, actually, Shane and Dave, question. Because I think it need be asked based off of the narrative you just gave. And, and I'm not saying they have or haven't, but which stars in the same regard has AEW actually created? Uh, I mean, Orange Cassidy, even though they didn't create him per se, nobody's been elevated during this era as much as he has. It's a good point. Good point. But I don't think AEW has done the same job of truly introducing their talents to the audience the way NXT does. I think a lot of AEW fans, AEW feels that their fans already know who their guys are. I mean, when they did the introductions with Jungle Boy, he was he was like he was coming through a swamp. There hasn't been anything sit down where they explain who they are, and that's the one thing that WWE has always done tremendously well is saying, "Okay, we're now going to tell you who this guy is," and that's exactly what they did with Escobar last night. It's what they did with Drake Maverick when he was fired, and then they brought him back. You got to get a emotional connection with the talent because you got to see who they were. Yeah. In the, in the weeks before AW, like the sunny kiss, uh, Joy Janela things. I like that. That looked like something more akin to what we're talking about now, character development. Mm -hmm. And let's explain who these people are. And if you explain who they are, that just opens the possibility in the viewer's mind of where these characters can go. But you, you never think about that until you can understand who they are. You know, you just talked about Jungle Boy. I've said this before. You just said he came out of a swamp. He should be coming out of a jungle. It's right there. It's right in exactly. there. I need yeah. to understand. I still don't really understand why he's Jungle Boy. You know, we asked that you know, question. That's, just, that's a small thing. The program. What, what, exactly. Why is, he's tremendous. He's amazing. He's a great talent. He's Luke, Luke Perry's kid. But why is he Jungle Boy? And did yeah. he come out of a swamp or a jungle? Or is he John of the Jungle? John of the Jungle. George, George of the Jungle. It's George. We're going to get back in a whole other red grape situation here. I was always John of the Jungle. The book I read was John of the Jungle. Who the fuck is John of the Jungle? <laughs> John of the Jungle. Maybe it's George of the Jungle. Watch out for that tree. It's George of the Jungle. Yeah. George. You guys can't change my history. You know, Damien, your private schools have not paid off very well, have they? <laughs> what did pay off was the main event. Did you ever see that little, there was a, uh, did you watch this cartoon about a little monkey named Curious John? No, that was Curious George. 
That was curious, George. And, and thanks for playing. The, uh, yeah. You could have you the... ran with that. You could have ran <laughs> with that. See, oh, because see, Dave, I, I lobbed him a softball. Curious John on this show. I lobbed <laughs> him a softball and he struck out. That's what that was. <laughs> well, folks, let's continue. We're in overtime here by two and a half minutes, which is fine because you guys wouldn't let us do a separate show. So we don't have a time limit. There's no overtime. <laughs> I'll do this shit for four hours. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know we're Amen. not doing the show on Raw right now. Okay, that would take four <laughs> hours. <laughs> and notice how we don't even didn't even talk about Raw, which because I just don't want to. I will say this though about Raw, if I may, before we get to the main event on NXT, which was uh, Keith Lee versus DJ DJack, uh, which I like, just it's easier to say um, for another winner takes all. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Pump the mix. That really wasn't the main event. That was to start off the second hour. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, in my mind, it was the main event because it was a champion. Shane told me that earlier. What? Well, when you talk about Moxley, <laughs> the focus on Moxley as the champion on AEW. Yeah, so, that means the, the focus of the show, one of the focuses of the company should be on it, but it doesn't mean he has to be in the last segment of the show. Go, go ahead, Curious John. <laughs> John of the Jungle, my question is this. So, hey, this will be the next Twitter uh, ballot. Go ahead. So here's my question. So, I realized this past Monday night why I can't watch Raw and I can't watch SmackDown. And I, I, don't, know why, I don't know why this was so <laughs> vivid to me, but I just, the problem is the environment reminds me of our global situation and the pandemic situation because of all the plexiglass and the masks and all of that. And oh, I thought you were like, going to say red and blue. No, no, uh, th- that's a clear line there. But it looks like they're in, it looks like they're in a hospital room. And I was watching this past Monday night. And I'm like, I can't. Watching this is pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't anything to do with the wrestling. It wasn't anything to do with the content. Because there was actually some good stuff uh, on Raw this past Monday night. I like the Randy Orton Big Show uh, thing. I like Ricochet getting all the time that he got. It was a good good program. But I'm Richard, watching it. Richard. It's Richard. <laughs> I was watching it. I'm like, the sterility of this environment is taking me. It's reminding me that I can't go outside without a mask on. It's reminding me that I can't travel anywhere successfully. It's reminding me I can't go to concerts, can't go to sporting events. Reminding me that I'm sick and tired of not getting sick. Uh, and 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 I just wanted to share that because we've been sort of bashing Raw over the last few weeks. And we said, not you guys, but me, we've said that, it, you know, there's no wrestling company that can do a bad show during this pandemic situation. It's just not... They're, they're putting forth a lot of effort. The talents are putting forth a ton of effort. We should respect and appreciate what they're doing. We may not like it, but we should respect and appreciate it, which we do. But it dawned on me this past Monday that it was the sterility of the environment, the sterile nature of the presentation, the damn plexiglass, which on NXT, you can't see because it's dark. That's what's bothering me about Mondays and Fridays on uh, WWE programming. That's interesting. I will... It's interesting. I don't, I don't disagree with you. That might play a part in it. That might play a huge part in it. Uh, well, and, and, and the rating, by the way, because those matter when you get your lowest ever, right? <laughs> they they definitely do matter, you know. Um, so uh, I hate the rating conversation I always have, but uh, yeah, I think you might be right. You know, it it does suck. It is a reminder when you see that. It is a constant reminder. So uh, I think you're definitely owning something there. Yeah, just wait till baseball starts and you see nobody in the arenas in the stadiums. Yeah, and that's just yeah. eerie, though. That's like apocalyptic. I can deal with that, but it's like. When you when anyway, anyways, not gonna you're you right. Know what though? But hey, one of the conversations that Shane and I have had um is sports are starting back up again with the NBA mm-hmm. and Major League Baseball. And we, and if you thought wrestling ratings were taking a dip now, imagine what's gonna happen now when you have the NBA with their playoffs starting up and the major league baseball coming back going up against raw SmackDown, NXT, and AEW. But will it's they be very interesting? Will the limited schedule cause that to happen, though? Because there's far fewer games from what I've heard, right? It, it doesn't matter. They're still going to be going head to head. Yeah, they're yeah. going to be head to head. Keep in mind, wrestling takes up three nights out of the week, That's true. and That's the true. NBA and the and Major League Baseball aren't going to sit back after all the money they lost because of this. They're not going to sit back and switch nights just, you know, to appease uh, the wrestling audience. So there's going to be a lot of head to head. And it'll be interesting to see what people watch. I think it's been fascinating to see. Like, I, I talked about this on Highway to Helms last week. I caught myself watching Cornhole 
on ESPN just because of the <laughs> um, championship drought. I mean, the sports was it really on ESPN? Uh, you know? I, I believe so. You know, I don't know if you're throwing me a, a lob there that I'm missing out on, but um, and I was I was watching it and I didn't turn it. I watched it for like two hours. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so uh, I don't I don't know what to say or, or where, what the future holds, but. Uh, I think it's fascinating that I haven't picked up on what Damien said, and I'm I'm really going to focus on that when I watch Raw and or, well SmackDown because that comes on tomorrow. I'm really going to focus on that uh, to see if that's a part of it. Kudos to Damien. I'm just giving my perspective, you know, fans perspective, looking at it from a different way. But well, it's the first I, time you've been right since I've been on the show, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I want to make sure you get the accolades, you know. <laughs> oh, right now I'm on your right. Okay. See, that wasn't good. No, no, no. no. <laughs> How about Keith Lee versus DJ? How good was that, Dave Hero? I thought it was great. I go, it, it, it had the heavyweight match feel. I mean, you had two big guys going back and forth. Yes, did they wrestle like uh, cruiserweights at times? Absolutely. But you still honestly believe that it was a heavyweight title fight going on as both guys were going toe to toe or as a uh, Freddie Blassie would say belly to belly, bumper to bumper, you know, back and forth. I liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it was a great first title defense for um, Keith Lee because he beat the undersized Adam Cole, and now he beats a legit giant in the ring uh, with D-Jack, which now makes him that, yeah, he is the guy. He's the man. Shane? Yeah, yeah, I agree with all that. I thought it was good. Uh, athletic. It didn't look like forced athleticism like I see from some other big guys that, you know, that get in that mindset, hey, I'm a big guy. I can do a flip too. Like flips aren't that hard, guys. They really just aren't. Um, but uh, I thought they looked good. You know, Heath, uh, Heath, Heath going over is so dominant, you know, hit hit the big super high choke slam that he does, uh, followed with his finish, the, uh, the Big Bang Catastrophe, which I love that name too, by the way. Um, I thought it was great. And then the, uh, the aftermath with, um, uh, what's her name? Carrying Cross is, uh, Scarlet, Scarlet. Scarlet. Yeah. yeah. Her coming out. That was just, well, that was super well done from a production standpoint. The lighting was on point. Uh, I guess that was the, was that the hourglass that was broken to pieces that yes. you put in there? So mm -hmm. you got that symbolism, but it took me a second to figure out what exactly that was. Um, <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason, I was just going, what the hell is that? I thought there was going to be like, Mia Yim's shoes or something like they done kidnapped me. That's exactly where my mind went. Like they got, I said, yeah, I bet this is something about Mia. How would they know what Mia Yim's shoes look like? I don't know. I just thought it was because I guess because the female was coming out that I don't know you, how you you want to get in Big Kingsley's head, you know? Right. That, that's an obvious thing. So I, I guess I was just thinking about that. And um, then it was the you hourglass, know, so I couldn't figure out what it was. But I just loved the way it was shot from the camera angles, the perspective with Scarlett's going back up the ramp and you can see Keith Lee in the background. He looked like when Thanos came to earth back there, just gigantic, man. It, I just thought that was really visually really well done. All right. Next matchup was Timothy Thatcher going up against and getting a win over Denzel DeJournette. Uh Thatcher is impressive to me. I mean, he, he's, he's a machine. Dave, what do you yeah. think? I, I didn't watch this one. I changed the channel. <laughs> Fair enough. Shane, how about you? It's difficult. We can't see all the matches. Yeah, it was it was good. You know, I mean, they stuck to the, uh, the amateur wrestling. The other guy, I believe, went to, uh, I think they said Appalachian State. I remember talking to him at NXT. Uh, Appalachian State was where I would actually train uh, for wrestling camp during the summer. Um, get my ass tore up, by the way. <laughs> but um, I thought it was good. You know, it wasn't pretty. It was a little uh, clunky at times, but, you know, I, I still enjoyed it. You know, you had the uh, the amateur style versus the uh, the, the Luthez hooker style. And when uh, Thatcher caught him in that uh, single leg, uh, it's a single leg crab, but it looked like he's putting more of the pressure on the shin bone, actually. Uh, you, you got the tap out, and it served the purpose of getting Thatcher over. Thatcher's Thatch can, as they say. Yes, I indeed. just think that, they, that with Thatcher's matches, they need to be a little – quick a little bit quicker i think they, they they drag on too long and the audience then disconnects i know that's the problem i have it's like let him go out there tie the guy up in a pretzel and beat him and be done and build him that way as a guy that just is a, is a master and too, like when he just goes over clean like i'm not gonna hate that 
You know, they right. that's mm-hmm. one thing that there's a lot of guys in the WWE um, process that still think heels going over clean is heat. And it just, it isn't. It's just not. It's cool. It hasn't been for a long time. So if Thatcher could have did something where behind the referee's back, he gouged my dude in the eye. And then he goes into that into that uh, single leg crab. And mm-hmm. when he's talking about it, he, 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 he leaves out the gouge in the eye or the thumb to the eye. He leaves out that part. He exactly. puts it over like it was his wrestling that did it. Now he's a liar. And now I have something to not like about the guy. He cheated. He did something, dare I say it, hillish. This, he just out wrestled the guy and beat him and made him tap out. Isn't what, it a why lost am art I supposed form, to? Shane? Why am I supposed to hate that? It's Do a I, lost art form. It's a lost art form. The heel is a lost art form. Yeah. And it's and it's not an, you know, I don't want to, I'm definitely not knocking the WWE process at all, but there are, you know, when you deal with that, and I've dealt with it before I dealt with it when I was there, I'm like, there's no heat in just go, beating a baby face clean. It's just not, you know, you're trying to build credibility. So I get a pass because here we're trying to build credibility for Thatcher, who I feel like he already had that after the uh, Matt Riddle match, you know, but, mm-hmm. um, but maybe they're just trying to add a little bit more because of personnel problems. So if he's going to get a clean win, this is the guy to do it with, you know, this, this type of personality, this type of character who isn't anywhere on the ladder. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's the type of guy to do it with. That being said, I still would have done it. I still would have gouged him in his eye. Let's get this personality over. C- call yourself the greatest wrestler in the world and then go out there and drag the guy's face across the ropes. Get ugly, get nasty. You know, get Buddy Roberts. That's heat. You know, yes. you just, like I say, I'll say it a million times. I'm never going to boo somebody that just goes over clean and just beats the guy. That's impressive. That's not heat. I think we lost Damien. No, no, I'm That's sorry. Heat. Oh, I'm, there I'm, he is. I was oh. absorbing, I was absorbing the, the, the teachings of Shane Helms. Yeah, I mean, like I say, and I might not be 100% correct in that, but that's just how I feel, how I've always felt. And I've been in those, and I've been the baby face that got pinned clean, and I'm listening to that crowd, and they don't give a shit. And I go, told you. (laughs) Yeah, the one thing you always want is a crowd reaction. You want the cheers or the boos. And when it's nothing, then the business was not taken care of, and nobody made money then. Well, the reaction was strong to the main event match on NXT this past week, last night. It was the champion defending against Tegan Knox, and Tegan Knox comes up short uh, in the main event, though. Uh, Io Shirai still remains the NXT Women's Champion. Dave, did you get a chance to catch this match? I did. You know what? I I, I thought it was a very good match. I thought both both girls did everything that could have been asked of them. I mean, they're going up against... Brian Cage and John Moxley on, on the other channel. But I thought the real big emotional moment was at the end when Shirai got completely blasted on the ramp. You know, I mean, okay. I mean, she got just crushed. I mean, it, that was like one stiff shot. And I was like, oof, well, that's going to sell tickets if they could sell tickets. That is the heat. <laughs> that's what you want to see out of nowhere, completely crushing. And uh, for me, that's how I left NXT thinking, damn, I can't wait to see those two fight now because now there's a reason for it. Shane, what did you think? Exactly. I, I, I like that. This, I loved, and I've talked about this uh, for the past couple of weeks, the promos leading up to this match I thought were great. Uh, you know, it made, it, it gave Ia Shirai this presence that I really thought was really cool. And it translates on her entrance. She's got this really cool. She loses it a little bit during the match by going, you know, just having a great match and losing a little bit of that mystique. Um, But that being said, this was a good match. I thought uh, uh, Tegan Knox, I always want to say Negan falling uh, from the walking (laughs) dead. She does, she does great. um, And she did great. She looked great. So I don't think she was hurt by this whatsoever. But yeah, you go to that out shot of Dakota Kai, right? Dakota Kai yeah, with that big yeah, boot to the damn face. That shit was awesome. I don't know why she had on the jacket. That was really, I was stuck with that. Like she kicked her in the face and then she took off a jacket real quick. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, that was odd to me. But just that boot to the face. And now you know, now you know where we're going. 
you got a champion, you know where the story's at. This was kind of the opposite of what happened on the other show. You know, the champion is the focus. The cha- the women's champion is the focus on that storyline. She wasn't just left in the background and the challenger gets attacked. You know, um, so I mean, that's an interesting parallel that happened. I doubt it happened on purpose, but man, that boot out of nowhere, that needs to be replayed, replayed, replayed. That was better than any Seamus bro kick, better than any Drew McIntyre Claymore kick. I mean, that was devastation incorporated kick right there. I mean, it was, it was very well done. And, and that is how you get was noticed. That, was that one of Paul Heyman's tag teams, Devastation Inc.? No, that was Gary Hart. Was it? Yes. Was that Gary Hart? Yes. Gary when, you Hart said it, when you said it, it was something. I'm like, what is yep. that from? Yeah. Okay. Gary Hart and Skandar Akbar. General yeah. Skandar Akbar. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We show some respect on Akbar's name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, gentlemen, as we conclude here, how about your final thoughts on NXT? Um, was that was that a nod to General Akbar from Star Wars? Skandar Akbar? Do you think he was secretly a Star Wars fan or did he predate General <laughs> Akbar from Star Wars? You know what? They may have been related for as far as I know. I have no idea. You know? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Yeah, General, okay. yeah, of course. It's a trap. And then, of course, you have Skandar Akbar. Yeah, absolutely. Bro, I'm with you. It's the okay. guy over there that has no clue we're talking about. Talking Damien, about this, is your, this is your chance to redeem yourself. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about right now? So I have seen all of the Star Wars movies, all nine. I don't, I can't tell you, talk about the first three. <laughs> They're great movies. They're good. I oh, no, he has no clue what we're talking about. Wait, you said from Star Wars. Yeah. I have You don't know. Do you know who General Jedi? Akbar? No. It's a trap. How He's in every meme imaginable or meme that you might, you might call it a meme. I don't know. But yeah, it's a trap. I don't it's okay, mean. Damien. I don't mean. Yeah. Shane, I'm sorry. I got things going on. I'm trying to keep you guys looking good, making sure this show is going good. That's what I spend my waking hours doing and watching 48 hours of wrestling every week. I almost felt a little tear come out. Because oh, that's, that's how disappointed I am right now. Because I can't so, cite movies from 1976. So, listen, Shane, Shane, in the last two weeks, we've had Grape Kool-Aid, um, John of the Jungle. Great. Good job, Dave. Great. And now he doesn't know who uh, General Akbar is. I think the show is a trap. The show is a death trap. I'm sorry, Admiral Akbar, not General Akbar, Admiral Akbar. Well, he was an admiral. Maybe we were wrong. Was he a general to begin with? He had to be a general to begin with. Oh, of course, but that yeah. admiral. Of course, if you'd yeah. ask me about admiral at Burke, of course. Oh yeah, that's okay. A that's a good. Uh, that's a good. Uh, that's a good yeah. rebound. We'll take it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. NXT last night. Overall thoughts, uh, Dave. We'll start with you. I know you didn't watch the entire show due to switching back and forth, but what did you think at the you end know what? of it? The ending was the exclamation mark on that show. I thought it was great. They were slow out of the box just because AEW stacked their show so heavy early on. And let's be honest, it's hard to have momentum for four weeks in a row, um, especially when you're missing some of your big stars, when you don't really truly see Karrion Cross in the ring, you don't see Johnny Gargano, you don't see Adam Cole, you don't see uh, uh, Loomis, and you don't see uh, the rest of the Undisputed Era. You were missing a lot of star power NXT last night, but they still had a great show. For me, it's easier B um, a B or a B plus. You know, you mentioned Johnny Gargano and the missing stars from the show. Uh, do you guys want to chat at all about what uh, Tommaso Ciampa has said recently about his lack of TV time? What did he say? I don't know if it was Twitter or Instagram, but I believe it was somewhere on social about you know he's experiencing the creative has nothing for you bug. Mm. Well, they don't. Obviously, they don't. Where do you put him? You can't put him with your babyface champion and Keith Lee. He already had his match with Kerry and Cross. So Adam Cole and his band of uh, misfits has haven't been on TV now. Where do you put Tommaso Ciampa? Do you put him in a program with uh, Thatcher? But he'll experience the exact same fate as um as he did with Kerry and Cross because right now they're going with a with a different set of guys. Yeah, that's that's the downfall sometimes of when you ha- when you've had the success in NXT that Champa has, you know, any if he's not if he's not presented at that same level from here on out, it's going to seem less than, you know, 
Like if he came back, it needs to be something with carrying cross. And if, if they're not ready for that yet, I think it's okay. I don't think mm-hmm. you force the issue and put him on TV and something that doesn't continue who he is, you know, and if, if he's not ready to just elevate people and, you know, slowly descend the ladder, then leave him at home right now. I think that's okay. You don't have to have everybody on every single show. Um, so, uh, there is there is a downside sometimes to when you're that successful that early on. You know, uh, I remember in WWE, I think Gail Kim, didn't she win the women's championship in her debut? Yeah. Like, her okay, well, what do, what do you do now? Mm-hmm. Everything after this, you know, unless you just keep winning it over and over and over, what do you do now? So um, that happens. You know, that happens sometimes. when, I, But it's, it's not the worst problem in the world. He's getting paid to sit at home. <laughs> so- that shit ain't bad. Thank you. That's not bad at all. Shane, your overall thoughts on NXT last night. I thought it was good. You know, I thought every segment and, you know, I'm a big proponent of this. Every segment had a purpose. Every segment elevated somebody, you know, uh, and that's what you need to do on a television show. You need to elevate characters. You need to elevate, elevate talents. Uh, Keith Lee looks tremendous as a champion. Ia Shirai looks tremendous as a women's champion. Um, I think Damian Priest looked great. Uh, that promo with Santos Escobar, I can't talk enough about how cool I thought that shit was. So I thought overall it was, it was a big win. You know, I thought both shows, AEW and, and NXT last night, were really good. A good night of wrestling on a Wednesday night, which is something we have been able to count on for the last several weeks. And we thank, of course, all the efforts by AEW and also NXT to deliver that. Uh, you know, I, I think it's interesting. If you look at the four shows right now, the five shows, if you include Impact, Six shows if you include Ring of Honor, but let's focus on the four, the big four, if you will. Um, what not on a week to week basis, but which show weekly has the 